three worlds of investment instruments, various annuities, two ways to grow a portfolio. How about pension buyouts? Have you ever wondered about sequence of returns, if it makes a difference? Folks, we're gonna be talking about all those things today, so stay tuned. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. Hi, welcome. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about what we call the three worlds of investments. I don't care what financial instrument you look at out there, they're going to fall in mainly three different categories. First of all, there's the safe category. Okay, banks have their version. It's checking, savings, maybe CDs. Okay, um, insurance companies have their version. It's, they're called fixed annuities. They, they pretty much look like CDs, but it's with an insurance company. And then the government has their version. They're called government bonds. I mean, literally holding directly the government bond. All these investments enjoy safety because they can't go down in principle, and they pretty much give you a, a fixed interest rate. So, it, so we call it kind of the world of the knowns. Then you have the other side of the spectrum, which are those riskier investments, okay? These are things that can go down in value, but your interest is not guaranteed because you don't know what you're gonna make. There's a lot of mutual funds that, you know, based on what their objectives are, can go down in value, but you don't know how high they're gonna go either. Um, insurance companies have their version. It, they're called variable annuities, okay? Now, variable annuities are an insurance product. They're, they can be complex in nature, but typically they have an account value which can go down. They might have an income feature which is guaranteed, which can't go down, but you better, better be under, understanding what the difference is. But here's, the, so we call that the world of the unknowns. But then there's this, what we call this world that we call the hybrids, okay? It has an element of both those worlds. For example, uh, a bank has its version, they're called equity link CDs, okay? Now, they're like a CD, they can't go down in value, but you don't know what your interest is gonna be like a normal CD. It might be tied to some index, you know? Let's say it's the S&P 500. Um, so they're going to say, okay, you can't lose, but in this period of time, if the S&P 500 is up, we're going to let you participate on that upside, but if it's down, none of the down, all right? So you can see it has an element of safety, but an element of risk, too, because you, you might make nothing in that regard, but you could make a lot. You just don't know. Insurance companies have their version. It's called fixed indexed annuities, okay? They're fixed in nature that they can't go down, but again, like a bank, um, an equity link CD, they might tie the upside to some kind of index. So again, let's say it's the S&P 500. S&P 500 from one, this point to this point is up. They're gonna let you participate in some of that up, but again, none of the down. Listen, there's a lot of financial instruments out there. Probably pretty important for you to understand which category your investment's falling under because if you're somebody that really wants something safe or, or want a hybrid, for example, and you're in the risky category, then you're gonna wanna make changes accordingly. So I encourage you, if you're wanting somebody who wants to understand more of your investments you have, give us a call. Listen, markets are cyclical. You'll have the long periods where the economy is in expansion, and then it's typically followed by contraction. When things go up and sometimes things go down. That's the way the markets roll. But what, we, what is not acceptable is when, when there's clear evidence that the market is maybe heading into recession or a slowdown, and most advisors are sitting back saying, hey, just stay the course. Listen, most are trained to be, follow what's called a buy and hold strategy. They figure that if they just get you well diversified, then when you hit periods like that, you should just hold the line, right? Unacceptable. If you look back in 2008 when the market dropped to half its value, it took almost five, six years to get back to, to where you were at. And if you're somebody near retirement, in, in retirement, possibly taking income from that portfolio, that's not gonna work. So when there's clear evidence that we're entering into recession, we believe adjustments are necessary. So I encourage you, when times are good right now, take the opportunity, give us a call, let us sit down with you, see how you're positioned to make sure that that can't happen to you. Your grandchildren are precious to you. They are your life. This is your time to have that special relationship. Taking care of yourself is taking care of them. 
Centennial Wealth Advisory is offering a free, no obligation retirement review to make sure you don't run out of money during your retirement. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about annuities. Now, anytime we're talking about annuities, we're talking about insurance products because annuities are, are, are financial instruments that are usually involving an insurance company. So very important to understand. Now, a lot of people see a lot of what I would call negative press on annuities. They see the ads that say, I, I hate annuities and here's 10 reasons why. Um, the truth about annuities is there's a lot of different kinds of annuities. They're, they're very complex. So depending on what your needs are, they can be good, but they can be bad. It, just, it really just depends on your circumstances. Um, the, I, the one I can think of right off the bat is what they call an immediate annuity. Okay, an immediate annuity is a lump sum the insurance company is going to hold. It's, it's this lump sum of assets. And then they're going to give you a guaranteed lifetime payout for the rest of your life. Guaranteed lifetime payout sounds really great, right? But here's the, here's the drawback. If you should pass away, guess who keeps the rest of the money? The insurance company. Doesn't sound very attractive. But if I'm somebody who doesn't care about leaving anything behind, maybe so. Another kind of annuity is what they call a variable annuity. A variable annuity, um, you know, kind of looks like mutual funds in a sense. They call them sub accounts, but they're with the insurance company. So it, it can hold investment risk. It can actually go down in value. But a variable annuity will have another side to it where they give you guaranteed income for the rest of your life, just like the immediate annuity. Now, now the difference in this case is if you passed away, there's some account value left. The insurance company just doesn't keep, keep the rest of it. But that's going to be dependent on how the market is done if it hadn't taken too much investment risk while you were in it. Could be a plus, though, if you're looking at it from the guaranteed income standpoint. Um, another kind of annuity would be a fixed annuity. That, like, that kind of looks like a long-term CD. It might be three, five, seven years in length. Um, you can't lose your principal, they'll guarantee that, but they'll give you a fixed interest rate, okay? Very much like a CD does. That can be good, but maybe if the interest rates are low, maybe bad. Now, there's also what they call fixed indexed annuities. They're fixed in the sense that you can't lose the value, okay, that's, that's a good thing, and, but instead of giving you a guaranteed interest rate like a fixed annuity does, they'll tie it to some kind of an index, maybe like the S&P 500, maybe it's gold, all right? So you get, you get to participate in that index if it's up to some level or degree, but you don't have to participate in the down. Folks, there's so many features that comes with these annuities and so many times people have these financial instruments, they don't understand them. I encourage you, give us a call if you're somebody that has any kind of instruments like this and you just want somebody to explain it to you. In many cases, you might find that it's perfectly appropriate for you under, under your situation, but maybe in some cases you might find it's not. Now, a lot of problems with these annuities sometimes is the holding period. So, you know, you may not be able to get out of it right away, but at least understanding the features and what you have might be very helpful. So again, give us a call. Thanks, Larry. Annuities, such a big word. I talk to different people all the time and annuities is either a cuss word and it's like this thing that we don't want, I want nothing to do with it. Or sometimes people are like, annuities, that's the only way to go and I'm all about it, it's all I'm putting my money in. When in reality, it's a much bigger conversation than that. It's not just one style like you were talking about. There's just so, there's a world out there that, that looks different for every person and their, their needs, right? That's right. Absolutely, Don. I mean, it's amazing how, you know, because of either somebody's parent's experience or they, they had one or some sort of experience that somebody had, they group every single, basically, annuity into one possible solution when there's there's many different types you know for most folks out there like annuities may be one of your most complex investment vehicles or insurance products that you will ever have in your life in some cases you know so there's just so many different pieces to it when you start layering on the different things and also the different types as Larry talked about out there some of them it could be relatively simple and then others be very complex but the one thing out there is when you're doing financial planning or retirement planning you know I think it's important to have an open mind you know when you're thinking about 
all these different investments and you know, walk through and truly understand them. I always tell everybody you know, when we're doing our retirement plan is I don't expect you to be an expert with this, but I expect is that you understand what you have why you have it and what its advantages and disadvantages are. If there was one perfect investment out there, everybody would have it. Um, but there isn't at this point. And until that happens, we have to try to work through and ha come up with the best what's best for you. Yeah, Art, I'm glad you brought that up because folks, uh, I can't tell you how many times clients come in, they, they've got these financial instruments and they, they, they are complicated, they don't know what they have and they just want somebody to tell them what they have. You know, and again, let them know what the pros and cons are. Uh, what I'd like to do is when they come in, you know, they want me to give an opinion on it, but I'd like to first find out what they know about it. You know, what is it they think that thing's supposed to do for them and are they happy with that? Then show them what they have and, it, and if it aligns with what their needs are, then fine. But sometimes it doesn't align with what their needs are and they need to know that. Anyway, folks, I want you to stay tuned because in the next segment, I'm going to be talking about how you grow a portfolio. There's really only two ways and understanding it is very, very important. So stay tuned. forward to helping you plan to retire well. If you're retiring soon, it's likely you have many decisions ahead of you. One of the larger ones is Social Security. How are you going to take it? Are you going to take it early? Are you going to take it at your full retirement age? Or maybe even delay it? Social Security needs to be viewed as an asset. If you live a long life, it's likely you can collect a large sum of money over time with those payments directed to you. How though folks misjudge Social Security commonly is how it's taxed. How are you going to pay tax on that for the rest of your life? And it's important to factor that in when to take it. And also paired with your other assets you may have, it may make great differences as well. If you don't have a Social Security tax plan built into your retirement, it's extremely important and could cost you thousands over your lifetime if done improperly. We would love to sit down with you here at Centennial Wealth Advisory and talk through what that looks like on a larger scale and see if we can help you have a successful retirement. Hi, welcome back. Listen, I wanna to talk to you about the two ways that you can grow a portfolio. Now, one way to grow a portfolio is through what they call yield. Yield in a portfolio is actual interest and dividends being earned on the underlying securities. If I'm a stock, I'm paying a dividend, that's yield. If I'm a bond, I'm paying interest, that's yield. Yield is the actual income, liken it to a rental house where you're receiving rent income, okay? Now, the second way to grow a portfolio is through appreciation. Okay, that's the idea that you're gonna be able to buy a security at one price and hopefully is gonna to grow to be at another price and you're gonna be able to lock in that gain and sell it off for that gain, okay? That's the second way you grow. Liken that back again to the rental house where you have a house and it's growing in appreciation. Now, what's important to understand is between yield and, and appreciation is that usually more volatility is associated with the speculative piece. So as you look at your portfolio, very important to understand how much yield you're getting because the lower the yield, the more you're relying on speculation, the more volatility you're most likely going to have. We have the tools to be able to dive into your portfolio and tell you exactly what your yield is. So I encourage you, give us a call. No cost, no obligation to look at that for you. Larry, for as long as I've been around retired people, my parents, relatives, you know, even when I worked in the hospital, being around uh, retired people, I can see that retirement really is based on your lifestyle, whether you're the person who travels or the person who wants to spend all their time with their grandkids and, 
and all the gifts and you know whatever it might look like for retirement it's it's about that lifestyle and now we see pensions are not as uh, they're not around like they used to be Social Security sometimes is is ha taking a hit here so you know I can see that income in this retirement, the portfolio is what it produces is really important. Yeah, very important. Um, you know, it used to be, you know, when somebody retired, they could move into fixed income accounts that were paying much, much more. Um, but today, you know, just your AAA rated bonds are paying very little yield. So people are, you know, where are they going to get their growth? And but it's a it's a it's a challenge because we want them to have growth. Um, in their portfolio, but we don't want it to be all on speculation or appreciation because, you know, let's take a stock dividend portfolio. If I'm only getting 1% in dividends and I'm relying, I want to get 6 7% growth and I'm relying totally on speculation, boy, that portfolio is probably going to have a little bit more volatility or risk associated with it than I would feel comfortable with. So folks, I encourage you, um, if you're somebody that wants to know what the yield is in your portfolio, um, we have the ability to you know, get behind um, a lot of these portfolios, especially if they're mutual funds, and see what the yield's been the last year so you know what that number is for you. So I encourage you, give us a call. Now stay tuned because we're going to talk about pension buyouts, when when you might want to do those, maybe uh, when you want to take the, uh, you know, the, the payment. So stay tuned. Are you drawing closer to retirement or already retired? Do you feel confident that you have a plan in place for your retirement? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we believe there are a number of areas within your retirement plan that must be working together. It's very important that you have a long-term income plan. You don't want to run out of money in retirement. And we believe that tax planning should go hand in hand with your income planning. So we have our very own accountant on the team to assist you. We also believe that you need to have your estate planning in order to ensure that your assets are left behind to your loved ones and or charities. Along with that comes insurance planning, whether that's life or health. Along with all of this obviously comes your investment planning, which you need to have confidence will help you accomplish your goals and objectives. As you can see, there's a number of areas that you need to be taking into consideration when it comes to your retirement planning. We'd love the opportunity to share with you how we approach all of these areas within your retirement plan. Please call the number on your screen. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I want to talk to you about pension buyouts. Now, I know a lot of us don't have pensions. You know, um, you know it seems like more and more people coming into our office today have, have little or no pension at all. Um, but if you're fortunate enough to be that person who has a pension, you know that when you retire, you're going you're gonna to have some options. You're going to have some things that you're going to have to consider. One is, do I, you know, a lot of these pensions will offer you a lump sum payout, okay, or a guaranteed income for the rest of your life, and you have to pick between the two. Um, you're going to want to seek a, somebody to help you with this because there's some things that you have to consider. Um, they'll usually change the payout options based on survivor benefits. For example, if you want it all to go to your spouse in case something happens to you, then that would be 100% survivor benefit, maybe only maybe half, and, and they'll change the payout accordingly. So that's a, that's a high consideration you're going to want to take a look at. 
You're also going to want to consider the credit qualityness of the company or government that's paying the, the payout. Um, it may be a great payout and you might want to have the guaranteed income, but if, if you have to worry about that company going bankrupt or that government possibly going bankrupt down the road, um, you, you're going to want to maybe have the lump sum and have it now. Okay, so that's going to have to be of high consideration for you. Um, the other thing you want to consider is liquidity. Um, do, you know, do I have enough money set aside for emergencies? If I'm just getting a guaranteed payout from a pension and then I've got Social Security, do I have enough money to fall back on for emergencies and things that I'm going to need money for down the road? So there's a lot of considerations that you want to uh, you know, take into account when you're looking at that lump sum payout or that pension. So I encourage you, if that's somebody like you, just give us a call. I'll be glad to you know, look at all those things for you and see if it, if it makes sense for you. If you're retired or soon to be retired, let us help you plan to retire well. Centennial Wealth Advisory specializes in retirement planning and has offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. We'll never pressure anyone to become a client. Our goal is to inform and educate. Simply attend one of our live events or schedule a meeting at one of our Northern Michigan office locations for a free, no obligation retirement review. You don't walk into a doctor's office for some blanket prescription for whatever ails you. You expect individualized attention, a doctor who listens, and a treatment prescribed to meet your specific need. When it comes to your financial future, why expect anything less? If you would like an independent checkup from an independent advisor with access to hundreds of possible solutions to help you meet your goals, contact us today. Hi, welcome back. Listen, in this segment, I just want to have a little bit of fun because I want to talk to you about what they call sequence of returns. Now, there's a lot of financial jargon in our industry, you know, and, and you'll find that anytime we're talking about any kind of financial jargon, we want to give you a thorough understanding of what we're really talking about. Well, one of those things sometimes we'll, you'll hear people talk about is what they call sequence of returns. And the conversation I would like to have around this is, do you know that it doesn't matter the order of your returns, you're going to arrive at the same amount no matter what. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of illustrate this on Chalk Talk to kind of give you a feel for what I'm talking about. So here's a person who has $100,000, all right, and they're going to get, in four-year period, they're going to get an 18% return the first year, a 7% return the second year, a 12% return the third year, but then all of a sudden they're gonna lose 40% in one year. Maybe this is like a 2008 or something. So you follow me on the math, the first year they make 18%, 18,000, they now have 118,000. Second year, 7%, they're now at 126. Third year, 12%, they're now at 141,000. And by the fourth year, now all of a sudden they lose 40% in one year, lose 56,000 but they're at 84,000. Now, what if I was to reverse that order? So the first year, instead of the last year losing 40%, what if they lost 40% right off the bat? And then in reverse, got 12% the second year, 7% the third year, 18% the fourth year. So let's look at that. How would that come out? Well, first year, I lost 40%. I'm down to $60,000. But now I start to build it back up. I get 12%, I get to 67.2. 
7%, I'm now at 71,000. Now by the fourth year, 18%, guess where I'm at? $84,000, the same place. It didn't matter, it, changing the frequency of the returns did, had no difference. Now why is this important? It's just important to understand that, you know, that's, that's the way the math is always going to work out. Now, some people, in, in fear that they're going to get a big negative, might want to take a little bit more risk on the normal because they think, if I can just get some bigger returns in the early years, that'll make up maybe for that negative year. I'm just going to tell them, I'll, I'll talk, talk to them about sequence of returns and say, listen, that, 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 doesn't, that the sequence of that doesn't matter um, whether you get the first year or the last year, the math is the same. So again, just thought I'd have a little bit of fun with you on that. Um, it, isn't it interesting that that's the result no matter what? So anyway, hope you found that valuable, was a little fun. But if you want to know how maybe that affects you and your retirement and your planning, then give us a call. You know, Larry, you know, pensions, I mean, it seems like they're a dying creature out there, but yet there's still quite a few people that still have them and are faced with this decision. Should I take a pension lump sum or should I start taking that ben benefit over my lifetime and maybe a, a joint benefit? A couple key questions you have to ask yourself. One, I call it withdrawal rate, but what is that going to give you as a percentage versus that lump sum? You know, if it's going to give you a 6% withdrawal rate, it's hard to do that. You know, Larry just talked about yield in a portfolio, you know, in that last segment we did there. In, it's, it's hard in today's environment with the volatility and the low paying bonds and interest rates to get that. So if that's what you're main concerned about, that's a piece to look at. The second piece though is liquidity. You know, when, if you take that as a, as a payout, you're not gonna have access to that, that, those big amounts of money likely ever again. What about survivorship? You know, if you're married or have children, what does that benefit look like to them? Is it gonna leave behind any money? Is it gonna pay a benefit to your surviving spouse? Or is that all gone? You know, so there's different things you have to look about. Life expectancy, you know, how long are you gonna live? I mean, if, if you're somebody that maybe has a short life expectancy or you have an illness that, that maybe is isn't expected to live a much longer time. There may be arguments with, with that and naming beneficiaries and stuff like that. So definitely a full conversation and lots of different things to go before just saying yes or no to that. You know, there's credit qualityness of the company behind it. You think they're gonna be around for the next 30 years. All these different things. So, you know, we've had situations come in where it's made sense to keep it and we're happy to help people with that. And it's made sense to take the lump sum in that person's situation. But I can tell you one thing, it's different for every individual. There's you know lots of different options out there. Every company offers different benefits. Every uh, person is, has different needs. So it's important if you're faced with that decision now or in the future to start looking for that, start planning for it, and start talking about it because there's tons of options that you need to know about. Yeah, Art, I had somebody that, you know, the, the payout was going to be really good percentage, and I didn't see any reason why they shouldn't do that. Um, but then, you know, they were concerned about the company that was paying it out. You know, they, they were saying, you know, I've worked for this company, I'm, I, and I'm going to trust this company to be there the next 20, 30 years to pay this out for me. I'm not so sure, and they ended up taking the lump sum just because of that reason. So I appreciate you saying that there's a lot of different factors. Folks, if you're faced with that kind of a scenario and you want to know how it, you know, how it fits for you, then give us a call.